uh, any ad. It means a group or a set of nine. It comes from the Greek, Enia, Aeneas. Think Ananias. Um, and it, it literally just means nine. Now, what this word means to me is the Egyptian, the true Egyptian zodiac. When Alexander the Great, uh, they call it the Greek Empire, when actually it was um, Macedonian, he was Macedonian, when he came into what they caught, what the Greeks called Egypt, but I have proven is ancient Babylon. Even the Babylonian fortress is in downtown Cairo to this day. I've done the video. You can look it up yourself. But Ennead means nine. And when they look, when they began studying the zodiac that they found, the, the Greeks found this zodiac, and it had nine constellations and nine planets. And it was called the Enneads, plural. It was called the nines, the two nines because the zodiac constellations fit the planets, and Pluto was included. This is the ancient alchemy uh, zodiac, the ancient alchemical zodiac. It's the oldest one we know of. I found the Egyptian had nine, but when the Greeks came in, it became eleven. The Greeks and the Hebrew had eleven. Uh, why the Hebrew only had 11 and not 12 after the 12 patriarchs was because Levi got no land. So to solve that problem, they split Joseph into uh, Ephraim and Manasseh when they moved from the 11 zodiac to the 12. So I found the 9, I found the 11, and we have the 12. So I began looking for the 10 and I could not find it anywhere. I've been all over the world looking for the Ten Zodiac, the Ten House Zodiac, and it don't exist because it never did. The Zodiac has always been the same. It's just houses have been connected to one another with these symbols that we call the Star of David or the Mogan David. Uh, it is... Um, the symbol of the combining of two ages. One age is always built on the top of another, and it always comes with a system. In the Native American tradition, it's in totems. So, whoever is at the top of the totem uh, will be the next race to be at the bottom of the totem. You move your way up the ladder, and then you go to the bottom. And it goes, it, it moved from India in air in Gemini, and it moved to Africa, black in Taurus, and then it moved to yellow in Asia in Aries, and then it moved to white in Europe um, uh, in Pisces, and now it's going to move back to the Americas with the red, which means the white or Europe goes to the bottom of the totem, and the other races get to move up the rank, and this is a repeating cycle throughout history. There is a group of people who have mixed themselves age after age with all of these peoples. Uh, they, uh, we consider them alien or hybrid or uh, they carry a lot of deformities, but they have, because they manipulate us, they are able to live much longer than we do. That's another story for another day. This video is actually about Pluto because I'm getting a lot of comments about Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune, and where am I getting my information. I get all my information from alchemy, all of it. I give you the list in every video below the description box. You will find a link for an alchemical library. Use it. Nicholas Flamel's work is there. Focanelli's work is there. Everybody's work is there. Uh, you just have to go learn it. And it's a secret language of symbols. And to learn that language of symbols, you are forced to learn at least three languages on the planet. Um, a sign language, 
uh, two languages that flip each other, and then astrology and different types of legends, maps, and symbology. That's my background to know all of this. So I understood completely how beyond Saturn, beyond the crown chakra in the system, lies Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. And they are aspects of the mind. And they are the, what I call the collective conscience. But it's divided up into three sections. We have a collective conscience mind, Uranus. Uranus is known for rebellion. And that's what the collective conscience mind does. We are a uh, creation that just rebels. We rebel against nature. We rebel against our parents. It's just in our nature because of Uranus. Then we have Neptune, which is the imagination. Everything that comes into this reality must pass through Neptune. A lot of people want to connect Neptune with Poseidon. They don't understand the chimera of what Poseidon is. They don't understand the, the power of Zeus and the water of the moon. They don't understand that Jupiter-moon connection that you would call Poseidon. It's like we call it the Sphinx. To me, it's the masculine axis of the fixed cross. It's the head of the man, Aquarius, and the body of the lion, Leo. It's one thing, but it has two aspects, because we live in duality. Now, Pluto is the collective subconscious mind, but it's also in line with our individual subconscious mind, and it speaks purely in symbolism. And that's the language that's being used in ceremonial magic like in the Vatican or at Mecca uh, all of this is ceremonial magic and it's based on symbolism because in the beginning was the word and that word Greek uh, and the Greek is logo it comes from the Greek logo go. It means reason or plan, plural logi, but we know a logo as a symbol. Greek philosophy and theology, the divine reasons uh, implicit in the cosmos, ordering it and giving it form and meaning. Logos, symbols. That's why they market symbols, logos, and it all comes out of the Greek. The Greek, we have, they begin them in the symbology in the Greek fraternities when you enter into college. You become a freshman. You're 101. You're a fresh man. And all of these symbols have meaning after meaning. I mean, every time, a lot of people want to say, that's the, uh, Ring of Saturn. No, Nike has always been Mercury. 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 If you... Mercury rules the market. So he's really move, moving the logo. This symbol here, uh, the bronzed serpent on the pole, that's the masculine axis of the fixed... of the cardinal cross. That's Libra. Libra on one end, a ram on the bottom. Or fire. Uh, Mitsubishi, the three air signs, Saturn and uh, Aquarius, Gemini uh, with Mercury and uh, Libra with Venus, the three air signs. And all, all, all of your, your sirens, all of it, all of these are sigil magic. That's why I keep telling you to watch the movie Branded. If you want to understand how this is done, this has to do with moon magic and the market, money, Venus, Taurus, the whole the whole gamut. And it's called I uh, in the last video I gave you a link. Oh. And you put Russian 
It's a Russian movie, but it's in English, right? But it's a Russian-made movie. I don't want images. I want all. And go to the IMBD. I left this link. And uh, every time I mention this video, I try to leave this link. Because in it, they actually show you the ritual of the red heifer, right? And when we talk red heifer, that is what Alexander the Great, the Ptolemy Empire, um, instituted in Babylon, called it Egypt. Uh, they superimposed the legend of Osiris and Orion on top of Babylon. That's why it became confusion, and today we know the symbol of the lion is confusion in Babylon. And that's why we have Bible, Bible, Bible. Uh, the Phoenicians, even our word Bible, comes from uh, a town that was a library, uh, not unlike Alexandria, and it was called Biblios, but it was a Phoenician library. Which to me are the faux Nicaeans or the fake Nicaeans. They're not nice at all. But it's this movie. It's got Max von Sydow in it. You'll like it. Pay very close attention to the scene of when the man sacrifices the red heifer. And all of that will uh, then begin to make sense. Let me... I want to go back to the Ennead. Now, actually, the Dendera Zodiac. Ooh, image. Did I spell that right? There we go. I didn't. Oh, I put an I in it. Daria. <clears throat> Let me get a good picture here of it. Because this is not very old. I can look at it. Me, uneducated. I can look at it and see the symbolism. And see Greek symbols. Persian symbols. They're not all pure to the original Ennead. So when they talk up when Ptolemy and uh, all of the great Greek works back then were looking at this information they were digging up in North Africa, um, they came up with what we know today as the story of um, Remus and Romulus. All of that came from there. Uh, they literally created it. Just like they did the story, they reinterpreted it, everything. And they, the scribes scribbled the scriptures and gave us Bible, Bible, Bible at Cairo, actually. Now, Cairo is mentioned several times in the Bible and in the New Testament. But people are not aware of it because they give us this name, Cairo right? That's not its original name. Even the names that Alexander the Great and the Ptolemy family gave everything, it's not original. Uh, these were all Greek, Macedonian, and every one of them, after Alexander the Great died, understand that the power was split up between four generals, four warlords who made all of themselves kings. They were, none of them were of what you would call a royal bloodline. They just invented it. Uh, that's exactly what they did. The original Egyptian zodiacs, the original hieroglyphs. I don't even know if we can get them anymore. I've seen, I've seen it in old works, old alchemy books. You, you can find them. Go fishing around. Uh, this information, uh, you don't really find it. It finds you. This is the crazy thing about all of this. They're going to give us this thing again as the Dendera, but it's not what you would call the true Zodiac. Again, they had the Ennead. They 
Did I spell that right this time? They had the nine. They were the nine gods, the nine houses, and they represent the our chakra systems and then our our mind, our subconscious mind, our imagination, and our conscious mind. The imagination to me, Neptune, the most misunderstood, but at the same time he was um the most significant. The imagine because this place is all about imagination. If we can dream it, it can happen. And that's just a fact. Uh, but it is the subconscious mind they've been using to control us. And that's Pluto. And Because he only works in symbolism. So they give you a symbol. They pervert it and make you either love it or hate it. Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. This is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the Ennead. And they represented nine constellations and nine planets that are all affect us. And let's see if I can get this in. Um, when you do it, you it's actually, uh, you're going to have the five-pointed star in here. And I'll show you why. Because 9 times 8 is 72. And 72 times 5 is 360. At 9 months that had 8 days, 8, eight, eight weeks or 8 days, 8 sections, 9 months into 8 weeks is 72. Or 9 weeks into 8 days. We had the Beatles song, eight days a week. It was eight days a week. And it was nine weeks to a month. And they were five months, or you can reverse these two. Uh, eight and the five into the forty, and then the nine months. Nine houses. But you still get that perfect 360 degree circle. And when you do the five pointed star in it, the five points make up the other five days. These are the holy days. And then you have the 365 degree calendar. You know, all timelines, all of this crap has always been about Mercury and Saturn. Because uh, Mercury does the navigating. He's the where. And Saturn is the when. It's the where and the when. Uh, this was, this is the original to me. And it's been really, really, really messed up. It, the houses have been divided. This, this, to me, this is what was before the flood. It was the Enneads, the 99. The 9 over the 9. And Babylon, right, after the flood, they flipped everything. And it all became based on six. They flipped it. The six became the nine. And everything flipped. Because all of our time is based on six here. It's 12 hours a day, six hours, six times four, 24. The whole thing. Six times uh, six is the 360. They do it by six times six. Uh, you can do... It's like the 144. There are two ways to get to the 144. One is 12 by 12. Is 144. But then, and then you have uh, in the Fibonacci sequence, uh, you start out 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Uh, the 3 and the 5 make 8. The 8 and the 5 make 13. The 8 and the 13 make 21, and you add the one that's before it. You add the 2 before to get the next number, and you have to go through thir a sequence of 13, and it brings you to 144. It's 21, 34, 55, uh, 89, and then you're 144. 
and it does it in 13 moves instead of 12 by 12. You got to come in the gate straight with nature. You got to come in the nature's gate, not the pie man, not the Pisces. I love that. Somebody done that for me yesterday in a comment. The Piscean age, the Pisces. Uh, it's pie in the sky is what they want, but they're, you're right, their pie is in the seas. But it's in the phi. I'm going to write it this way. They write it the P-H-I. You get the H, right? That's nature. That's the breath of life of nature, that H. That's why there's a difference between a female, a female, and a woman. A woman is a magic circle man, straight out of the Egyptian hieroglyphics. W means magic. That symbol for W means magic, magic, magic. And the circle is the womb. It's feminine. It's the woman. All of magic used to be only done by the women because only women bleed. So now for the, the patriarch to do the magic, they have to provide the blood sacrifice because they don't bleed. It's unnatural. He's the pie man, the woman, the magic circle man. You know, in the, the Greeks, everything we really have, it, they pre-imposed Greek over it in one way or another. Even Hollywood goes all the way back to the Greeks. And uh, all the Greek tragedies and comedies, that's what all of this is. That's why they can only repeat and repeat the stories. Because they're, it's about one set, uh, a timeline. And they, they don't want to move from that timeline. That was their power. And there were no women allowed. No women were allowed on the stage. So all of the women were men. And uh, they continue this perversion to this day. It's just most of the public has does, is not aware of this. To be in the film industry, you have to be in a guild. Uh, they use many words. For the Muslims, I mean, for the Masons, they call it a lodge. Uh, for the uh, the masses, the religious folk, they call it a church or a synagogue or a mosque. Uh, for the higher classes, you start to move into what they call guilds. Uh, and the screenwriter's guild, uh, that's a priesthood. Those are the scribes. Those are the scribes putting out everything in Hollywood. They do all the programming, and they're all, to me, Hollywood is a, the whole thing. 100% is a CIA op. All of it. Uh, just like the church. It's all, uh, it's all a, a, a manipulation to control us mentally. They can't fight us and beat us back, so they just simply manipulate us. They control the mind. They entertain mint. They're going to entertain your mind. Keep you busy. Give you lots of choices. And they don't care. They don't care if it makes you happy or sad or any of that. A lot of people think they want to uh, evoke fear and all of that. But really, it's any emotion. They don't give a damn which one. That's what people don't understand. Now, you're, the reason they use fear is because you're so gullible to it. You're so gullible to fear porn. You automatically get angry and react. Automatically. It, even if you don't react, you still have that inward reaction. Ooh, that pisses me off or that makes me mad. And it's so effective. It's much more effective than trying to make everything uh, happy, ending happily ever after. Right? You're going to... You leave out happily ever after. You leave out with that little feeling. But when you piss somebody off and they leave a theater pissed off, that feeling is going to stay a lot longer. They really distracted you. It's not the distraction while you're in the theater or watching the show. It's how long can they keep you mentally wrapped in after the fact? Can we get them to make some videos about it and piss some other people off? It's any emotion, really. The thing is, to turn them off. Don't react. I can't tell you at how much Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, that's what it's about. It's about, control one, control your emotions. Two, control your tongue. 
that Mars and Mercury, the M&Ms. Because uh, we do. We spawn, if we physically react, but that tongue is quick to lash out in response to a root chakra, Mars, being pissed. That's the first thing we do. And of course, everything's encoded into the, the symbol. In the beginning was the word. The word is logo. And here's here's your, your basic symbolism. I've actually done all these videos uh, on the hieroglyphs of Egypt and other glyphs and sigil magic and all of that. I've already done all of them. I've done them a few years ago just to lay the groundwork because I didn't know how people were going to take what I had to say about the Bible being an astrology book and a book about consciousness and about everything, really. <laughs> it really, everything is in there, all the gods. It's a book about the powers of nature. The powers of nature. Dendera Zodiac. This is just freaking not Egyptian. This is so Greek, Macedonian, uh, an overlay. It, it's it's a peat and a repeat. Uh, I'm beginning to even truly wonder about what they're giving us they call the Mayan calendar. I think they've manipulated it. Uh, I know how good they are at making what they call artifacts. One of my first loves was archaeology. It still is. I, I'm either digging in the ground or looking up in the looking at old things buried in the ground or looking at the stars in the heavens and knowing I'm caught somewhere in between this. But everything they tell us about Egypt is just a flat out lie. I don't care what it is. I don't care who's giving you the information. Uh, you you got you you just gotta learn the old tradition. You gotta learn the symbology and go in there and do it for yourself. And again, all of this, this whole construct it deals with us on an individual basis. It gives us exactly what we need for that time in our cycle of the alchemy. What's good for the goose is not good for the gander. Unless the goose becomes the gander, right? See what they're doing? But here, here are your main deities. At least that's the way the Greeks want to interpret it. But in the symbo in the sim language of symbology, uh, we should be able to look at this and see the truth of it for ourselves. We go from the masculine to the feminine. We can see the uh, air signs with the feathers. We can see the water signs with the colors. See how they change colors? You go from the masculine to the feminine. You you dig out those alchemical symbols. And then you know who, what archon you're dealing with. An archon, we get the, is an archetype. It's a template. It's like the original template is all it is. It just means the very first old original template. And this is basically what we have. The Ennead of Heliopolis. That's what it's called. The Ennead of Heliopolis. And Helios meaning the sun. Polis or city, the city of the sun. But I don't trust anything that comes on National Geographic, History Channel, Discovery Channel, Learning Channel. All that is paid propaganda to keep you confused, to keep you in Babylon so you don't see it for yourself. Even this, they show us this and tell us this is the Egyptian symbol for Orion. No, it's not. It's the damn Greek symbol for Orion. It, it's the, the, to Africa went, from Macedonia to Africa went. It is Bibble Babble, because they're showing it to you as the three pyramids, and it's not. Do I have anything to do with it? That's all, all Greek, a Greek tragedy. That's what this is. I've shown you the original wizard, the vizier, Boo Weezer, the true, um, constellation of Taurus and Orion. Uh, and that star in his hand there, that little star, 
That's their secret. That's the I in soft. That's the I in the wisdom of that constellation from ancient times. I don't want that. Been through all of this. So, uh, I don't like arguing with people about who wrote what, who said what, how do I know Pluto is the subconscious mind? Because that's what the Enneads tell us. That's what the alchemy tells you. Once you start digging into the symbolism of the Enneads, you realize real quick that it's the collective subconscious, Pluto. And even on an individual basis. But alchemy completely deciphers all of these images in a way that, one, it takes away the fear. It takes away the lies, and you're left with just, it takes away the traditions of men. And then you're just left with the root, the source of it. Where does this come from? If you want to know where anything comes from, you must first learn the symbolism. And each legend has its own set of symbols. So you have to learn the set of symbols for that legend. And alchemy really helps with all of that as well. Because as above, so below. That's why if you learn astrology, the rest of it opens up to you. Because those are the symbols that have been pre-imposed in the heavens. They're up there for us so we can understand ourselves down here as a group and as a people and even our natal charts is our individual self but then to truly know thyself you have to take that same knowledge and take it within understand what's above is mirrored or perverted here but then it's re-mirrored back inside to the true source that's why they're so busy perverting symbolism because it's the language the heavens speak. And if they can get you raising up two fingers, thinking, or the three fingers, I love you, make, making you think that means love, and everybody's on board, when it's really about war and money. So, any ads, Pluto, there's where I get this information. Alchemy, let me just see if I can pull this up for you people. I do planetary linguistics, learn the names of the planets in different languages. Then you'll understand that Mercury is Hermes, that Jupiter is Nibiru, or Guru. You'll, you'll know all of these things. Alchemy, PDF, and ebooks. You find the link below every video. Let's go there. If I can get my browser to cooperate. This is the best one I found. I did have a link to another one somebody sent me, uh, and I lost it along the way. Uh, I wish they would please, if you're listening to this, resend that link for that other alchemy library. It was fantastic. But all of it's here, alphabetical order. And if you'll come down to F, F, uh, you'll see from alchemy to chemistry, 500 years of rare and interesting books. These are links within links. This is just going to take you everywhere. And you can go through all of the great work. Nicholas Flamel, Periclesius, all of the great alchemical text. And these are all like handwritten manuscripts. And we can thank uh, the Illinois, University of Illinois, rare book and special collections library for this but I've done most of your homework for you I give you all of the links I laid all of the groundworks in at least three years of going through etymology the language the language of the stars the planetary linguistics the symbology I did all of that before I attached it to the heavens and that's when everything woke up for me and it will for you too everything is here I've been through all of this long before it was put into this list I had the privilege of being on occult.biz before it was hijacked and I wish I still had all of that work 
that was just, to me, it was like walking in the library of Alexandria before they freaking destroyed it. It was incredible. You even have the testament of Nicholas Flamel. This is, uh, Flamel's work was the easiest for me to understand. That's when I really woke up to it. He really connects alchemy, the philosopher's stone, um, the Bible, and the heavens. So great work there. Uh, Jesus, I'm going to say it because that's what they called him, but to me he's Thalem, the master. Thalem said that all script is good for knowledge if you know how to read it. And knowledge without understanding is a damn dangerous thing. That's what we got going on on YouTube right now. A whole bunch of people got a whole bunch of knowledge, but they don't understand what they have. And they did exactly the same thing the Ptolemies and the Greeks are doing. They superimposed their own ideas over it instead of letting the symbology speak for itself. That's why when I do charts, I don't want to know anything about you. Don't send me emails telling me your life story and what all's going on. Because I don't want to know. I don't want to be influenced. I want the chart, the symbols, that magic wheel to speak all for itself. It tells me about you. I don't need you to tell me about you. I don't want to be influenced in any way whatsoever. I don't want nothing but your birth, where you were born and when you were born. That's it. That's all I need to know. And the heavens tell me the rest. And that's the way we should come at information like this. But everything has been perverted to where we don't know what we're dealing with. Alchemy has just been a sure stone for me. I'm not kidding you. To me, it's the stone the builders rejected in a big way. Because it's that one piece of information that makes everything else make sense. Origins of Alchemy by Lynn Osborne. And everything is in there. It helps you. An alchemist can go around the world and read all of the ancient symbolism. It doesn't matter what language it's in or who did it or what time it was done. Because that's how the builders work. They work on symbolism. It's all encoded and embedded and I've already explained to you, origin itself tells us where. Everything comes from the Orient. Everything from uh, Genesis 1. Before Genesis 1, there was another creation here. Another magic wheel. We didn't have, a, we didn't have this moon. Everything was different. This is a complete redo. And then we have a flood in the middle of that that destroyed everything. But there's a destruction at the end of every age. Either they have to blend together or the new age coming destroys the previous age. That's why Europe will be destroyed. Uh, what's his name? The big prognosticator of Europe. Uh, Michel Nostradamus. He predicted the destruction of Europe. All of them do. Because that's the way it happened. Just like Cairo was destroyed. Just like Jerusalem was destroyed. Uh, even India. The great, the great cities in India that lie below the water. They were destroyed. Every age sees a destruction. So the new age can begin, and then it's built on top of the old one, or that knowledge, not exactly on top of it. Uh, it's funny, though, how when they superimposed the age of Taurus over the age of Leo in North Africa, it's still on the fixed cross. And uh, I think that's a way of preserving that knowledge, but it got perverted. It's just like... You can go around the world and find pyramids because in the a pyramid, one, represents an element, earth, water, air, or fire, depending on the color, uh, depending on the direction. Upward pointed pyramids are air and fire. Downward pointed pyramids are feminine. They're water and earth. But in the age of fire, uh, pyramids were built all over the world. In the age of earth, pyramids were built all over the world. 
you'll find evidence of the uh, northern Europeans all over the world. You'll find evidence of the Chinese all over the world. You'll find evidence of the black man all over the world. Because in each age, that's how it works. That race for that continent, that spe specified area, they get a DNA upgrade. They get a knowledge upgrade, all based on the sun and the constellation it's in in the spring equinox. And then they rise to their peak in the middle, and then they decline. Now, Capricorn and Aquarius are going to be one age. They were one in the Ennead. There wasn't a Capricorn and Aquarius. It was one. Uh, they call it, We would know it as Pan. But again, they perverted that symbolism and gave us ugly old Baphomet. Ain't he ugly? Uh, they know not what they do. We just, I look at the Baphomet and reinvert it to my subconscious as Pan. I understand it as the man and the goat. But it's all here. Uh, symbolism, the most important thing. and uh, The thing is to get the true symbols. And you have to start with the basics. You have to start in kindergarten. A lot of you want this uh, heavy layout of all the symbolism in like a college level. But literally, you're going to have to start with your back in kindergarten with your squares and your your balls and your cubes and your triangles and get the true meaning of those and the color systems and the angles that they are presented and the meanings behind that alchemy gives you that it's really basic it's super basic but alchemy explains why we're here and everything it debunks evolution altogether uh, this is a fine design. It is a mutation. We tran Alchemy transmutates. We're all Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Actually, that's kind of true and not. It's not Ninja Turtles. Uh, it's a different kind of turtle. It's not a Ninja Turtle. But the premise is the same because North America is the great turtle. You know, there's a saying about when the turtle... Uh, pulls in its uh, appendages. It takes its head and its feet into the shell. Right now, like Baja, California, and Florida are two of the feet for the turtle, and it has to pull in its head and its tail, and uh, they have a tale that that will happen again here, that America, North America, the turtle, the great turtle, will pull in its feet and its head, and all of that will be back underwater. And that very well could happen. It has to happen in an age of water to start with. So it could happen now, or that won't happen again for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So in this age is an age of water. They have lived by water magic, but they've also mixed it with fire magic. Because it's an age of fire and ice. We never let go of the past. The Babylonian priesthood of fire still rules. They rule everything. They're ruling the Vatican. They're ruling Hollywood. This Babylonian priesthood of fire is really who's in control. Have been. Have been for a very, very, very long time. And they just keep morphing. They'll change their name. They'll change their robes. They'll, they'll change the whole damn religion. It don't matter to them. They're not, that's, they, they don't have an investment in the religion. They know it's an invented construct. They have an investment in retaining the power at any cost. Uh, they have no humility, no shame, no, none of that. All of that's irrelevant. And it is a patriarchal power. Now, if we look at this whole thing of 2020 like the dark crystal, the separation that occurred, I see, uh, the Skeksis is like the Vatican, Europe. And I see uh, the mystics, is those are the Tibetans, right? The Tibetan monks. The Tibetan monks are yellow and red. They're masculine. They have air and fire. And the Vatican is black and white. It has earth and water. It's feminine. And the two have to come together. There has to, for this age... To have truly met its apex, that's what should have happened.
is we should have seen the yellow and the red come together with the black and the white, the Skeksis with the mystics. And when the two comes together, then religion as we know it disappears. All religion. Because one tells the truth about the other. And then they see they are one. That's when the, the two come together, the masculine and the feminine. And those two powers, respectively, right now, lie in Tibet and in Rome. No other place. Not Mecca. Not Jerusalem. Those are power points of the past. And that's just there to keep those people under control. Those are the gods of that area of the world. Every, every people around the world, they were given one house, one God. So to have, when you talk about the Romans worship Mars and Jupiter, well, that's Aries and Pisces. That's how they stay. Oh, we will take on your God too. Not a problem. Bring him on in. Job likes everybody. It's Job's son anyway, right? Vulcan. Mars, son of Zeus, Uhura Mazda, burning bush, Molek. What a great bunch of kids he has, huh? How about all them them gods? Uh, Zeus himself is a pervert, an adulterer, a murderer, a liar. He has no redeeming qualities at all. These are all really, really bad, bad gods. But Time takes care of everything. And that's all it takes is time, which is Saturn. They've told you time is money. Saturn. They, that's really all you get here is time. Saturn can be your friend or your enemy. It's what you're doing with your time. Are you wasting your time? We only have a certain amount of allotted time. None of us get the same amount of time. We all spend our time differently. What are you doing with your time? Uh, if Saturn's ruling this place and it's about time, then you're going to have to give an account for your time. And remember, there are ledgers. You have to know the knowledge, know the ledger. And there are ledgers. So we have to give an account for what we've done with our time. Did we waste our time? Did we throw it away? We, we always complain we don't have enough time. We hate Saturn, but we want more time. You can see how it causes confusion. But if I could just get use people to start picking up alchemy, and it's a journey you must carry yourself. I can't do this for you. Those images, those symbols, there's something that your inner being is going to know. They're going to connect themselves to you. And the only way that's going to happen is if you go on the journey yourself. So I suggest every one of you make a new hobby of trying to learn at least a symbol a week or a month or something. Begin somewhere. A symbol a day would be awesome. But to really understand a symbol, to really get into the symbol, when you look at a symbol, you have to look at its masculine aspects, the straight lines. Its feminine aspect, the curved lines. And how it all fits together. And it, then it will begin to emit a frequency, a tone. When you spend enough time with that symbol and understanding the meaning behind it, then you can start to feel it. Literally. And that's the way all of this should be working anyway. Because it all runs on symbolism. That's how they're controlling it through our subconscious collective, by perverting the damn symbols. That's all they're doing. Scribbling the script is perverting the symbolism. Because all of this, in the beginning was the symbol. There was not anything, all that was made was made by the symbol. Not anything was made, made was made without the symbol. And the symbol becomes flesh and dwells within men that is the third eye. Working in conjunction with the subconscious mind and the imagination and the conscious mind. The third eye, Saturn, connects to Uranus, Pluto, 
and Neptune. I call Neptune Saturn's hidden hand. Neptune has many as the imagination or Neptune is what creates or predicts our future. So wherever your Neptune is in your first Saturn return, that's what your mission is. Jesus started his ministry at 30 years old. That was his first Saturn return. And wherever Saturn is on your first Saturn return, that's what you're supposed to be doing. But most people don't know that. And it doesn't matter. The society doesn't want you to be what you were born to be anyway. They want you to be what they want to remake you to be. They want to rubber stamp, carbon copy everybody. And it's not going to work. They've, they've absolutely failed. They've, they completely failed this age. 100%. To ha for it to have been a success, they would have had to brought together the Tibetans, mystics, with the Roman Skeksis. Uh, but that's another story for another day. This was supposed to be about Pluto and the Enneads. Where am I getting this information? How come Uranus don't rule Aquarius? We've only known about Uranus for 200 years in Western culture. So they just start making up information. Okay, well, we'll just put it here then. They don't even know what the hell they're talking about because they don't understand alchemy. Uh, Uranus and its uh, characteristics is so far from Aquarius, it's there's no way. Not to mention the outer planets move too slow. Alchemy in that magic circle is based on returns. Uh, the planets go around and around and around and around. I mean, you got to live to be damned old to get one Pluto return in your life. One. Uh, if you live to be in your 60s, you might, you'll, you might get a Uranus return. So, it don't even make sense. It's just something somebody made up and put it in a book. And that's what you get. When you go on these sites and you put your little information in and the computer spits you out um, a free astrology chart right you can do it for tropical sidereal whatever and it's all information that's coming from a book I years ago when I first started realizing what it was and I was wanting to learn about astrology I paid the top sidereal astrologer on YouTube for a chart what I paid $65 for was a 15 minute audio in a circle that he didn't tell me anything and it didn't make sense at all and he just babbled out a bunch of shit for about 15 minutes and then I went online and got the free one and the free one was exactly what he gave me that's all he did he went online uh, audioed the free and just read what the what listed there below the chart that's what he did and it really pissed me off because I could have done that I could have saved myself $65 and done that now when I do a chart that's not what I'm doing you're not going to get a graph a wheel a pie chart because I don't understand that it don't make sense to me what makes sense to me is looking at that circle and knowing that there are three crosses at Golgotha and three crosses in the heavens and when I do your chart I'm doing it based on the fact that the Bible is an astrology chart and that's the book I'm using to decode your natal chart. I'm not using uh, anything from any other astrologer or any astrology books. The only book I use is the Bible and my knowledge of alchemy. All right, getting loud outside. That's my cue. Go be the kindness. And if you haven't already please consider making a donation to this channel, especially those of you who um, uh, have benefited from this information. I, I spend a lot of time answering emails. I try to be um, give everybody answer everybody's questions if I can. And so if I've helped you, please consider helping me at this time as well.